Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we're putting on our detective hats and jumping into a real cosmic mystery. We're on the hunt for the origin of some of the largest and frankly weirdest objects in the entire universe. And the whole mystery really kicks off with this question. You see, astronomers started finding these, well, these things, these huge, faint, almost ghostly rings of radio light, millions of light years across, just kind of floating out there in the void. And the weirdest part? There was no obvious reason for them to be there. So what are they? Well, they've got a name that's pretty on the nose, Odd Radio Circles, or ORCs for short. And let's be clear, these aren't just supernova remnants or something we see all the time. We are talking about structures so massive they make entire galaxies look small, glowing in radio waves but pretty much invisible to our normal telescopes. They are, in a word, odd. And here's the real kicker. They just shouldn't exist. At least, not according to our standard models of how galaxies and their supermassive black holes are supposed to behave. We've only ever found a small handful of them, so every single new discovery is like a major clue in a puzzle that's forcing us to rethink how the cosmos even works. But here's where the story gets really interesting. If you're picturing supercomputers and automated telescopes solving this all by themselves, think again. Let's meet the detectives at the heart of our story. And spoiler alert, they're not who you might expect. Okay, so meet Rad at Home. It's this incredible citizen science project out of India. Basically, it's a network that trains everyday people, students, engineers, science buffs, to become cosmic pattern hunters. They visually pore over these massive maps of the radio sky, looking for anything that a computer, which is trained to look for what's normal, might just completely miss. And the way they do it is just brilliant. After some online training, these volunteers start meticulously scanning these enormous images. If they spot anything that looks even a little bit weird, they post it to a forum. The whole community then jumps in, debating what it could be. And only after all of that does it get passed up to the professional astronomers to get the final check. It's just a powerful reminder that when you're looking for true anomalies, there is still no substitute for the trained human eye. So, did all that hard work pay off? Oh, you bet it did. The Rad at Home team just recently uncovered three absolutely bizarre radio sources that are giving us critical new clues in this mystery. So let's take a look at the evidence. All right, Exhibit A. The team found something that doesn't just break the records, it completely shatters them. This isn't just another ORC. This thing is a cosmic behemoth that totally pushes the limits of what we thought was even possible. We're talking about a structure that's 800 kiloparsecs across. Now, that number probably doesn't mean much, right? So let me put it this way. That's about 2.6 million light years. That is wider than the entire distance from our own Milky Way galaxy to our neighbor, Andromeda. It is mind-bogglingly huge. And it just keeps getting crazier. This ORC is the most distant one we've ever found, and it's by far the most powerful. It's also the first one spotted in this particular sky survey. But the weirdest part of all, the biggest clue, it's not one ring. It's two, and they seem to be intersecting in space. Now that's interesting. Okay, now for clue number two. And this one's a bit of a curveball, because it's not actually an ORC, but it's just as strange. It's what we call a giant radio galaxy, and it looks like it's trying to twist itself into a ring. This thing is a monster, clocking in at 865 kiloparsecs. That's big enough to officially earn the title Giant Radio Galaxy. Its scale is just incredible. But again, it's not the size that makes it a key piece of evidence. It's the shape. So let's break this thing down, because it's wild. It has two jets shooting out from its center. One of them shoots out and ends in a normal hotspot, exactly what we'd expect. But the other jet, it does something absolutely crazy. It looks like it hits something, takes a sharp 90 degree turn, and then the plasma flowing back from that collision seems to be puffing up into a giant ring. It's this bizarre hybrid monster that doesn't fit into any of our neat little boxes. And now, our third and final clue. And honestly, this one might be the most exciting of all. It is like we are catching a ring being painted into existence by a direct cosmic collision right before our eyes. This whole complex structure is about 440 kiloparsecs wide. But forget the size for a second. It's the arrangement of all the pieces that's the big deal here. I mean, just look at this picture. You have this long, wispy jet of plasma traveling for thousands and thousands of light years, and then it just slams into something, forming this bright, beautiful ring. And what's sitting right there, smack in the middle of the ring? 
another galaxy. This is as close to a cosmic smoking gun as you're ever going to get, strongly suggesting we're seeing a direct jet-on-galaxy collision. Okay, let's pause for a second and put our evidence on the table. We've got a giant twin-ring ORC that breaks all the records. We've got a powerful jet whose backflow seems to be curling up into a ring, and we have a jet that looks like it's actively colliding with another galaxy to form a ring. Three very different objects, but they're all forming these incredible rings. All right, we've got our evidence. The scene is set. Now it's time to figure out who done it. Let's look at the prime suspects, the theories, and see how they stack up. So, the billion dollar question, what on earth could be making these things? It turns out what's so cool is that each of our three clues seems to point to a totally different but equally incredible explanation. So for that record-breaking ORC with two rings, the leading idea is a massive shockwave, maybe from two galaxies merging, that ripped through space and reignited an old dead bubble of plasma, making it glow again. For the deflected giant, its jet's backflow could be curling into a giant vortex, kind of like a cosmic smoke ring. And for our collision, well, it's probably exactly what it looks like, a direct hit between a jet and a galaxy's halo. And for that third one, the jet collision, the researchers had this perfect analogy. Think about the solar wind hitting Earth's magnetic field. It can't just punch through, right? So it flows around it, creating this compressed, glowing shield, which we see as the aurora. It's the same idea here. A radio jet hits a galaxy's halo and lights it up like a giant bow shock. So, after all that, what's the big takeaway here? What's the moral of our cosmic detective story? Well, it's about more than just some weird radio circles. It's really about how we do science. You know, there's a quote in the research paper that just nails it. In this age of big data, yeah, we need computer algorithms for speed. But to find the truly new, the truly odd things out there, we still need human insight. The citizen scientists at Rad at Home found these objects not because they were faster than a computer, but because their eyes were open to the unexpected. And that really leaves us with one final incredible thought. In all the petabytes of data pouring down from our telescopes every single day, what other cosmic secrets are just hiding there in plain sight, waiting for a curious human eye to come along and spot them? The universe is just full of mysteries. We just have to keep looking. Thanks for helping us crack the case today.